the message for today. We do want to honor and thank God for our Facebook audience. We say God bless you all and thank you for being with us as well as those who are on Zoom. We say God bless you. And let's go into a word of prayer and get right into this word. Gracious Heavenly Father, now has come time for your word. Father, I just ask that you would please move me out of the way. Remove me out of the way, Lord, that you might have your perfect way. Bless me, Lord, to give this message the way that you have given it to me. Don't let me add nothing to it. Don't let me take nothing from it. But help me to give it to the way you have given it to me. Lord, I give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And I thank you for what you're going to do. I thank you for the people that you're going to minister to. I thank you, Lord, for touching them. And I pray, Lord, that they would receive this word. Help us all to receive this word, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles. I wanted to get two portions of Scripture. I want to get Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. And we're just going to read three verses, one through three. And I want to get... Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. And pastor was messing around, skipping a little bit around in the message a little bit, confirming it. So thank you, pastor, for uh, confirming this message. But Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. Joshua Chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. And when you get it, say amen. 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 How about this? We're going to have, can we double team? Can I tag team? Sister, Sister Don, you read uh, Deuteronomy, and we have Sister Sharon read Joshua. Amen. Is that fine? See, we got to work together. They, they talked about that in uh, y, or, uh, Prayer Bell, but <laughs> about us working together, so we need to work together. So, Sister Don is going to read Deuteronomy chapter 8, 1 through 3. Amen. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou, know, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that the man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Amen. Sister uh, Sharon's coming. Thank you, Sister Don. Wonderful reading. Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an, inherit an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Good success. Mm -hmm. Verse 9, you, let's get that verse 9. Just get that verse 9. You're fine. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Amen. You all may be seated. I got for a subject. The Lord gave me for a subject. I need you to get this before you get there. Tell your neighbor, I need you to get this before you get there. 
Elder Blair and Pastor and them have been talking to <laughs> Sister Sharon. I can't leave you out. You guys have been talking about the word and different things, and Elder Blair has been talking about there. But I need you to get this before you get there. That's the subject that the Lord gave me. Now, when we look at the book of Deuteronomy, it is the last of the five books that were written by Moses that we refer to as the Pentateuch. I hope I'm saying it right. All right. Or the law. That's what it was called. The title of this book means a second law. This book is not a second law, but an adaptation, an expansion of much of the original law that was given to Moses on Mount Sinai. The Jewish people also called the title of this book a copy or a repetition of the law. And lastly, it's the book of remembrance. Tell somebody, remember. The book of remembrance. Now you may ask the question, preacher, why is this so important? Why is uh, this telling us about uh, repetition of the law and remembrance so important? It's important because it gives us insight on the purpose of Moses writing this book and the audience that he was writing it to. Let me stop real quick because I didn't give honor to my wife. I want to say God bless you, honey. I thank God for my wife. Thank God for my children. Hallelujah. Thank God for the first lady and everybody here. But please, let me jump back into this. But there's importance in knowing that this was a, called the repetition of the law. The book of remembrance is because it, it, it gives us insight. And it gives us purpose, the purpose of Moses writing this book in the audience that he was writing it to. The audience was the children of the original descendants of Israel that Moses had brought out of Egypt. We know that God wanted to take them to the promised land, but they could not go in because of their unbelief. It tells us this in Hebrews 3 and 19, that they were not able to go in because of their unbelief, because they did not trust and rely on God. Hallelujah. It's a problem when you don't rely on God. Hallelujah. I wish you would tell your neighbor there's a problem. Hallelujah. In this life, hallelujah, that we're living in, it's a problem when you will not depend on God. Hallelujah. They couldn't go in because of unbelief. Now, God is at the point where he's ready to take these children over the place he had promised their parents. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. I know the Bible says that these things are written for our learning. I know we're talking about the children of Israel, but you all, you have to see us now. God us. Mm. He, he's ready to take us higher. In this church, I don't know about you, but the pastor was praying and he was prophesying and speaking it to us. And I don't know if the church is ready to go up. Hallelujah. I believe God wants us to go up. Hallelujah. And these men and these children were at the place where God was ready to take them up. Are you hearing me? God was at the place where he was wanting to take them up. In Moses, somebody say Moses. He doesn't want them to make the same mistake that their parents made. Why do you think he's re reminding them and he's telling them, listen, don't uh, keep the law. Keep the word of God. Trust God. Look what he did for us in Egypt. Remember what he did for us in Egypt. Hallelujah. Y'all were in bondage. And there was nobody that could bring you out. But my, I brought you out with an outstretched hand. I just tell you that we, God has done some things in our life. I can't speak for you. 
but I know what God has done in my life. Hallelujah. And he wants us to rehearse these things. He wants us to tell folks what he has done for us. Moses don't want them to make the same mistake that their parents made. Sometimes history repeats itself. Hallelujah. He doesn't want them to make that same mistake. So he's drilling the word in them. This is why he's rehearsing and going over the law with them. Again, you all, again, repetition, the book of remembrance, all it's, it's, it's God, Moses is warning them to get ready before they go somewhere. Mm, I, I tell you, we're going somewhere. But there's something God wants us to get before we get there. Mm, thank you, Jesus. There's something that he wants us to get. And there's not only something that he wants us to get, but there's something that we need to get before we get there. So there's three points, you all, if y'all allow me to just share three points with you all today, and I'll try to get out of the way. The first point is, and again, I'm referring to about them, but this is about us today. This applies to us on today. Uh, the first point is, is that God wants to take us to a place of prosperity. Can you say that with me? I know, let me say this real quick, because I know sometimes when you hear that word, people just get nervous, because people are just really butchered and just tore up the word prosperity. But I believe God really wants to take us to a place of prosperity. God wants to take us to a place of prosperity. The word prosperity means the condition of being successful or thriving. Let me help you understand. You can be rich and you can't be successful. So God is not taught prosperity is not being rich. And people think money and in our world think that success it's just having all this money. The richest people, hallelujah, could be the less successful people. You can be rich and not be thriving. Hallelujah. I hope I'm making sense. But I believe God wants us to be successful when it comes to relationships. I believe God wants us to be successful when it comes to being on the job. I, be, I can't give everybody a, a position because you're not successful in it. I don't think you're going to handle it the right way. You're going to misuse what uh, power and position that you have given, been given. God wants us to be successful and thriving with everything that he gives us. If I can have an opportunity to preach his word, I don't want to just preach Elder Blair, but I want to be successful at preaching. Hallelujah. I don't want to just sing a song, but I want to thrive singing my song. I tell you, God wants to prosper us whenever we do anything for the Lord. I tell you, tell you, never you should want to be successful at everything that God has put in your hands and at your disposal. I want to be successful at it. I want to thrive in it. Glory be to God. Can I tell you all who was in a place of prosperity? Joseph was in a place of prosperity. Even though he got sold into slavery, you would have thought he would have been the most bitterest man in the world. His brothers sold him into slavery. Hallelujah. And he went to that slave owner's house and he began to be successful with everything that he did. Hallelujah. That he said, listen, I got to put him over my house because he's successful with everything that he does. He was thriving, you all. Thank you, Lord. A slave. But yet he was prospering. He was successful. Hallelujah. This is what really prosperity means. Hallelujah. So you all support it yourself and say, God wants to, me to be uh, in prosperity, a place of prosperity. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Even when they treat you wrong on the job, he still wants you to be successful. Hallelujah. I don't have to get mad at you. I don't have to uh, um, 
fight my own battles because the Lord will do that for me. He'll do a better job than me. Hallelujah. He wants us thriving. He left that uh, slave house and wrongly accused. Someone trying to make a pass at him, another man's wife. He did, he, he done the right thing. He ran, left his jacket, then ended up in jail. Doing the right thing. But can I tell you, he went to jail, Sister Mary. And the jail is, this man is successful even in jail. He's thriving even in jail. I'm talking about the hand of God was on him. God was with him. Hallelujah. I don't care what I'm going through. Lord, just don't leave me. Lord, don't let your presence leave me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He went to jail. Wrongly convicted. You all, he had the opportunity to be bitter. Opportunity to be angry. Lord, I'm not studying you no more. You, you promised me something. You gave me a dream and hallelujah. Now I'm ending up here in jail. I'm mad about these people wrong. I'm wrongly convicted. But he began to thrive. Even in the jail. Tell somebody, I want to be like Joseph. I, when people talk about me, hallelujah. I want to yet be successful, Hallelujah. Because I want folks to, they give you stuff because they know that you can handle it because you're successful with it. The Bible tells us, do things as you're doing it unto the Lord. That's the whole purpose. If I'm asked to do something in the church, I want to do it with my best ability because I'm doing it as unto the Lord. That's how you can be successful and thriving at a thing because you're doing it. As, as you're doing it unto the Lord. Why do you think he got promoted in Egypt? Pharaoh said, no, I got to use this guy. When he told him his dreams, hell no, that, this, I can't find another person like you. You're thriving. You're successful. Hallelujah. So again, you all, God wants to take us, I'm getting back to uh, our lesson, but God wants to take us to a place of prosperity where we're successful and we're thriving. Many times we focus on and we hone in on the people going to a place of milk and honey. And that milk and honey represented increase in abundance. It represented luxury and that's what we all focus on. We like, oh, they're going to a place of increase, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But what's the point of getting to a place or a position of increase and you can't be successful there? I, I, I just want us to help you understand God wants you to be successful when you get to the place. Hallelujah. I don't want just the position, but I want to be successful when I get there. Oh, my God, I wish you all could feel it like I'm, uh, God has given it to me. But whatever position I'm getting, I've been given, I want to be successful at it. Hallelujah. People wanted positions, and they got them, and they just miserable. They're not even successful at them. But I want to thrive in the position I've been given. Every opportunity that I've been given by God, I want to be successful at it. I want to thrive with the position. Hallelujah. You all, I don't know what God is doing to me, but I feel something. I feel some anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the enemy has been messing with us. Enemy been trying to discourage us. Enemy been attacking your wife. But I read this message and said, God wants to bring us up higher. He wants you to strive. He wants you to strive. He wants you to be successful. Again, we look at them going to a place of milk and honey and a place of increase. Increase messed a lot of folks up because they could not handle it. Let me say that again. I said increase messed up a lot of folks because they could not handle it. God wants you to handle the increase. 
I said God wants you to handle the increase. He don't want you just to handle it, but he wants you to be successful there. They were going to a place, but even though they're going to a place, God wants you to be successful in that place. Which brings us to our second point. What is he trying us to get, help us to get? He said, you need to get this before you get there. Our second point is you need to get this. You need to get, excuse me, you need to get that your prosperity is directly connected to you following and relying on his voice in his presence. Let me say that again. Your prosperity is de directly connected to you following and relying on his voice in his presence. Tell your neighbor, I can't be successful or thrive. I know y'all writing, but you can't really be successful or you can't thrive if I'm not following God's voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I'm, and if God's presence is not with me, I cannot thrive. God is the reason why I'm thriving. I say God is the reason why I'm thriving. Some of you in positions you shouldn't be in according to man. But God, if he's with you, oh, thank you, Jesus. Who then can be against you? If God's hands be on you, favor is on you. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. But I understand my success, my thriving, is directly connected to me following and relying on his voice. If I ever stop um, relying on God's voice, I'm not going to thrive. If I ever stop God's presence from being with me, I'm not going to be successful. It's directly connected to us following God. Let's look at our text. When we look at our text, he says in Deuteronomy, I commanded you. This, he says, all these commandments which I command you this day, you shall observe to do. What is he saying? Be careful to do it. I want you to be careful and strategic and really listening to what God is saying. He says, observe to do it. What he say in verse 1? That you may live and multiply. If I don't listen to God's voice, I'm dying. There's a lot of folks dying spiritually. Don't have no strength. Are you following God's voice? It's so important that we follow God's word because his word gives us life. And listen, he says that you may live and multiply. God wants to give you increase. And he says, and go in and possess the land. I don't want you just to go to the land, but I want you to possess. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but he wants you to possess the land. I don't want you just to have the land and see it and look at it, but I want you to possess the land. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Which the Lord swore unto your fathers. They're following because God said, I want to give it to you. There's some stuff God said, I want to give it to you. Mm. It's important that you follow God's voice, not your own voice. Because you say, I ain't good enough. Oh, I can, I'm not able to do that. I'll tell you real quick, I, I remember trying to, they, the man brought off that van to us. I almost said, like, no, y'all take that back. That, that's too good. No, go take that van back. Give me something a little cheaper. But God said, no, that's the only thing you can get. We kind of cut off our own blessings because we said, no, I can't afford that. Uh, you ain't paying for it no way. Yeah. Hallelujah. I wish somebody, you ain't paid for nothing. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You ain't paying for it anyway. Can't you believe me and trust me that I can pay for it for you? I'll give you strength. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You ain't paying for it. God paid for it. Hallelujah. Mm, he wants us to go up and possess the land. 
Notice he says, Thou shalt remember all the ways which the Lord thy God led you these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and prove you, to know what was in thy heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. Would you listen to the Lord or no? Listen to verse 3. He said, He humbled you and he suffered you to hunger. Mm. He allowed you to hunger. I tell you, sometimes I believe God wants us to go through some stuff sometimes just to show you I can make a way for you. I really believe that, saints. I really believe that there's some things that I've been through, and we wanted God to say, Lord, get me out of this right now. I don't want to stay here no more. But God had to prove to you and show you that I can make a way for you out of no way. I believe there's some times we, uh, listen, he says, he suffered you to hunger. He suffered you to hunger. And he fed you with manna which thou knewest not. How many know I got a check that I didn't know where it came from? This lady came to our house and said, I got to give you some cash because your wife and your children in the house. That's a manna from that you don't know of. Some of you have received checks you did not know where it came from. Mm. Mm, thank you. So, yeah, I'm sorry. This message is this dealing with me, but I remember that time me and Sister Cynthia was eating some chili. Hallelujah. And one of our neighbors came up and said, do y'all want a van? Do you want a van? Mm, he had something in his hand said, look, this, I, this, I paid a dollar for your <laughs> for your title. He said, I said, a dollar? He said, here, here, I got the dollar for you, man. Pay attention. Get, get what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to bless you. I'm trying to bless you. How many people give you a car with the title? There's a lot of folks doing deals and they ain't even getting the title. What is wrong with you? You can't even sell it. You need the title. You can't even make it legal without the title. But they brought the title with them. That's when you know somebody really want to bless you. If I really want to bless you, I'm going to give you the title. <laughs> so that you can make it legal and put it in your name. See, when it's in your name, that means you're an owner of it. Hallelujah, they are transferring ownership. I don't need it in my name no more. But I need you to put it in your name. Y'all help me, Lord help me today. But I, I'm trying to put some stuff in your name. Hallelujah, thank you, T. I'm trying to put it in your name. Your name. Your name. Your name. Thank you, Lord. Y'all, sometimes we're not catching it. God trying to put it in our name. God, it means it's yours. I don't need my name on it because I don't own it anymore. But when you put your name on it, it's yours. Oh, there's some blessings that got my name on it. I said there's some blessings that got my name on it. Mm. Y'all gonna have to talk to the Lord. He's doing something with me today. But he got my name on it. He said, I fed you with manna, which you didn't know nothing about. I think about sometime this thought came to my mind when we, and I don't even know if they use that word anymore, but when you used to have some money, you used to call it bread. I got some bread. God has shown you your bread ain't enough for you to take care of yourself. So sometimes I got to provide you with some manna, some bread that you don't know nothing about. Just to show you that I'm God and I'll take care of you. I had a hard week this week because I didn't know how I was going to pay my insurance. Mm, thank you. And they took that hundred dollars. Tell you about no, I need that. I need all of that because I know I gotta renew my bill before Monday. You all, my, but God make a way for you. Someone gave me more than what I needed. Yeah, I ran to that uh, insurance place. I ran there, Elder Blair, on my lunch break. I usually don't do that. I said no. It's the principle. I just want to take care of it, just to say it's done. Thank you, Lord. I'm talking about feeding you with manna which you knew not of. 
You're not just, you you got to get to a place. This is what God is trying to help us to get. You all, I'm trying to fast forward through here, but y'all pray for me, please. I'm trying to fast forward through here. But God wants you to realize you can't live off your bread. We're not living just off of food that we get. How many know, I got this written down, that the body needs bread for survival. And sometimes you can use bread as food. Sometimes bread is referred to as food. You have to have money to buy food. But again, food, we're so blessed. We don't even recognize that, uh, that your body needs food for survival. It needs water for survival. The Bible, or I read this up about the Bible, but I, read, I looked up on Google. It said that the body can only go 8 to 21 days without food and water. So, in other words, your body needs food for survival. But God is trying to show you, you do not live off bread alone. You don't survive off bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out of my, his mouth. And some folks don't want to pick up the word in a month. And wonder why you're not living. You got you to gotta eat God's word. God's word to do more for you than your bank account can. Uh, glory be to God. Because God's word will give you favor. We're not living off our means. We're not living off bread alone. But this is what you need to get. This is what you need to get, you all, before we get there. That, that God's word, I need God's word for every area of my life. How, th this is how I live. Is by God's word. And again, if we look at Joshua, you all rushing through here. He said, be strong and be courageous. Because this, for this land, I come to divide. I chose you to divide this land for the people. Listen what he says. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do. According to all the law. James tells us, don't just be hearers of the word, but be doers of the word. And I come to let you know, you can't do nothing that you don't know. We need to know the word. The word needs to be a part of us. I can't really do the word if I don't know it. The boss come on the job and say, Shabar, I need you to do this, uh, uh, this, uh, this, work on this equipment, this and do that. I I don't know that equipment, so I can't do it. I only can do what I know. So that's why God wants us to rehearse his word. That's why we go over the word. This is why we do these things, so that we'll know the word, Amen. knowing it where it's a part of us. I can't do something I don't know. So if we're going to be a doer of the word, we have to know the word. Hallelujah. We got to know the word. But listen what he says, according to all which the Moses, my servant, commanded you, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. Listen, he said, don't turn from his word, from the left, right hand or to the left. Look, catch this, y'all, please catch this. He says, that thou mayest prosper. That thou mayest prosper. The word helps us prosper. Whethersoever thou goest. Verse 8 says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate on it day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. I don't want to just meditate or just read it, but I need to meditate on it, concentrate on it, study it, get it down in me so that I can say that, uh, he says, that may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. When I'm following the word, when I'm living the word, I'm going to be successful and I'm going to be thriving. When I know the word, when I'm living the word, when I have the word, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I'm going to be prosperous. I'm going to be successful when I'm following the word. And our third and final point, saying, if you can get this, 
Mm. You'll be able to maintain there. Let me say that again. If you can get this, what I just described to you all about living the word, keeping the word. Hallelujah. I'm not living off bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of his mouth. That means that I, I'm surviving off. Mm. Some of us are surviving off the word. I said some of us are surviving off the word that was spoken over our lives. Some of y'all are living off the word. Some of y'all just living off faith. <laughs> mm. See, God will take you to a place where you have to, can't do nothing but lean on his word and believe his word. I'm at a place where only all I got is the word. And Lord said, that's all you need is the word. Hallelujah. Because you can have some faith when you have the word. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But if you can get this, you'll be able to maintain there. God doesn't want us to just maintain a spot. Mm, I'm, I'm going to get in trouble now. But God don't want us just to maintain a spot in the church and on the pew. Hallelujah. Got my name there. I say he don't want you just maintaining your spot there and sitting and relaxing there hallelujah maintaining i'm just maintaining my position i'm just gonna sit down on my gift i'm just gonna sit down on my song and just maintain there hallelujah i don't want to be bothered i'm just gonna maintain there i tell you god don't want you just to maintain there hallelujah but he wants us to hallelujah thank you jesus he wants us to thrive there he wants us to be successful there Hallelujah. That's what God wants you to maintain is that thriving and that being successful there. Any place I go, I just want to be successful. I want to maintain it. Hallelujah. That any position I'm in or whatever I've been given, I can maintain there. I said God wants you to conquer there. He wants you to thrive there. He wants you to be successful there. And he wants us to be able to help change lives there. Listen, when you're there, you're changing the atmosphere. When you're there, you're changing people's situations. Hallelujah. Because you got Christ in you. Hallelujah. So when you're there, hallelujah, you can change the atmosphere there. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. See, the devil trying to tell him we ain't important. Or, you know, my, 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 um, me just being there, my testimony don't mean nothing. Oh, yes, it does. People need your testimony. People need to know what you've gone through and, and that you've been out and the Lord delivered you. That encourages them. So God got you there to change some things. You all, I'm almost through, please. I'm almost through. But he, he, he don't want us just maintaining there, relaxing, but he wants us to conquer there. And one thing, God, he understands that there are giants there. This is why you need the word of God. Because there's giants there. And there's things way too big for us there. But it's not too big for God. This is why you need the word. And the word has to transform our way of thinking. One of the things we need to take note of. I didn't say it earlier. But Caleb and Joshua were the only ones who were able to go out of that generation. With these children of Israel. They were the only two because they caught it. They, they, they got it. They said, let us go up. Man, we're, these people are like meat for God. But, but the other people said, no, we're like grasshoppers. I can't do it, Lord. I can't do it where you, where you put me there, but I don't think I can maintain there, Lord. Mm. They limited God. Saints, we don't want to limit God with our small thinking. Hallelujah. Our unbelief. There's giants there. And the more, you know, there's other giants there. But the Lord showed me that the bigger giants that are there are the ones you can't see. These people are worried about giants and they're fearful of giants, but the giants that they did not recognize were there was a, the giant of doubt. The giant of unbelief. See, the battle was already won. The, the, those guys didn't even have to lift a finger because they put fear 
in the heart of the people. See, the giants that you can't see are the ones that are the most dangerous, the giants of doubt, pride, fear, intimidation, insecurity, and even sometimes tradition can be a, a, a giant, and so forth and so forth. But God wants you to have success against these things. I'm going to say it again. God wants you to have success over these things. God wants you to conquer these things. These little giants of fear and intimidation. I don't want to be intimidated no more. I say, Satan, no more. Hallelujah. Because God is with me. God is in me. Hallelujah. Tell somebody I'm in a better covenant now. I'm in a better covenant than they had. Let me tell you why. Because in Jeremiah 31, three to, Jeremiah 31 and 33 through 34 says, But this shall be the covenant <clears throat> that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts. And I'm going to write it in their hearts. And I will be their God. And they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more. Every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity. And I will remember their sin no more. Jesus blessed us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He sacrificed his life for us. And we can conquer these baby jobs. Hallelujah. I said we can conquer this fear. Hallelujah. This anxiety, this insecurity, all these giants. Hallelujah. We can conquer them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because God has wrote his law in our hearts. Hallelujah. And lastly, St. John 14 and 26, our pastor was talking about it earlier. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. And even when we look at the word Comforter, Comforter means helper. It means called alongside to aid. Mm, thank you, Jesus. He is our help to help you face these giants. And some people have been battling these giants for years and years and years. But God don't want you just to battle them. He wants you to conquer them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He wants us to conquer them. Hallelujah. He wants us to shake up Robertsville. Hallelujah. He wants us to shake up this community. There's too many men that are at home. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's too many men around this neighborhood that could be here. Not only men and women, children. Hmm. They could be here. Hallelujah. He wants us to change it. Our community. Yeah, we hear all the time. This is the Franklin County is the place where drug capital. God wants us to make a difference in this community. He wants us to change some things in this community. But it takes the power of God. We can't do it by ourselves. Tell somebody, you can't conquer these giants by yourself. So this is why we need to get this, that it's God that is fighting for us. It's God that is delivering us. It's God that is delivering them uh, for us to take. God helped them to conquer these things. But he said, the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Remember I said this was the book of remembrance. He's trying to help them understand the Holy Ghost is there to help you. Remember. Mm. Not only is he there to help you remember, but he's there to teach you. And bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. I don't know about you, but I can forget some things in a minute. 
But the Holy Ghost uh, brings scriptures back to your mind. Me and Elder Blair were talking, and we were talking about getting messages together. He said, Lord, to be giving me stuff, I got to write it down real quick. I got to write it down real quick because the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, will bring things back to your remembrance, what you heard in Sunday school. The Holy Ghost will bring back things to your remembrance from years ago, what he said to you, what he's spoken unto you. And some of those things have not come to pass. I know there are some things in my life that have not come to pass, and it almost looked like they're not going to come to pass. But that's why we have to hold on to every word of God. I believe God, when he, when it, even when it looks different, even when circumstances say you can't have it, I believe God. I got to let go, Pastor. God bless you all. I, I got to stop preaching, otherwise I'm going to. God bless you, Pat. Back into your head.